Environmental NGO Green Connection is against NERSA's decision to grant three generation licenses to floating energy provider Car Powership South Africa. While NERSA is yet to furnish its reasons for the move, environmentalist groups are saying that such reasons can only be flawed. The Car Powership Consortium last month failed to obtain environmental approval from the Department of Fos uh, Fisheries, Fos Forestries and Environment. Let's give you a sense of what else you and I need to know. Bring in Liz McDay. She's the strategic lead for Green Connection joining us via our video link and Liz it's great to see you thanks so much for making time for us here on the AM report so at the heart of the issue really is that these licenses have been granted without prior environmental approval for those struggling to note why that's significant help us connect the dots what are the nature of your concerns yeah so government needs to act in an integrated way I mean we can't have our government sort of going off in different directions and so that's one of our concerns is NERSA, as the energy regulator, also has as one of its objectives that it has to look for the, the, the needs of future generations. That's obviously important from a climate change perspective. It's also important from a price of electricity perspective. And as you have uh, noted on your news stories, the uh, price of electricity is really high, and there's been several stories over the last few days of protesters saying uh, we can't pay for electricity, we won't vote unless we get electricity, etc. And yet, NERSA has approved this, um, uh, these three applications for car power ships. So our concerns are A, how is NERSA assessing that it's right for future generations? One, it has no environmental authorization. In fact, it's not so much it doesn't have one the authorization was refused. Um, and when you are assessing an environmental authorization, you have to look at, again, the future. Uh, and the car power ships have not done any studies to show whether there would be a real impact on um, the marine environment, which means, in terms of acoustics on fish, which would mean that that would undermine the livelihoods of existing communities along the coast. Not only that, this is a 20-year contract for so-called emergency short-term power. Mm. So that raises our eyebrows. Why have we done that? The second thing is in that um, application, which the public was supposed to comment on, they were supposed to tell us, or they, rather they didn't tell us, things like how much are we as South Africa going to pay for the gas which is going to fire up those ships because it's coming, we believe, from Shell, but it's coming at probably an international dollar-related price, um, which means that over 20 years, how do we know what it's going to be? And then the other questions is about why are we picking a fossil fuel generator, as I said, for 20 years when it's supposed to be short-term power, when there is so much sun and wind all over the country that could be harnessed instead. So I think that would be our our clear concern um, that we really think that NERSA has not applied their mind. Yeah. Just for context, Liz, I mean, help us understand how car powerships actually work. I think many people are even coming across the term for the first time. We know how coal typically works. Wind, power, sun are pretty clear to the public. But car powerships might be quite, call it an enigma for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, well, I think we're all coming to terms with this, this uh, strange term. It's, it merely means that it's a power station on a ship, and the power station is running on gas. Mm. Um, so what happens is you bring a, sh a, a ship, and it's quite a clever concept. If you have like an earthquake, or there's an emergency, a war, and, and there's no power, so the, the grid goes down. Then you bring in one of these ships, you plug it in, and you have power for emergencies. But we are not going to have a 20-year emergency. Even ESCOM is not that bad. <laughs> Right. Well, I know a lot of people who might actually disagree with that, but that's probably a an aside. What is interesting is that, you know, uh, to your point, there's, in fact, a global push away from non-renewable energy. In fact, in at the UN now, issues around climate change are cert certainly taken center stage. What I've also heard, though, from industry is that we have so many reserves that it doesn't make sense, really, economically, to move away from things like coal. Can the same be said about gas? And even if that is the case, is that a good enough reason to continue using these non-renewables? So we have to think about the risk. 
So for South Africa to abandon the rest of the world and go, okay, we're going to like dig up all our coal, we're going to go out into the ocean and we're going to drill madly for oil and gas and stuff the rest of the world. That's, that's like firstly not very cooperative, but secondly, it's going to bite us in the backside because Southern Africa is predicted to be one of the worst hit by climate change. So it seems to be really stupid to pretend it doesn't exist and go help a letter for the wrong um, resources. We have one of the world's best solar resources. So why don't we put our research and development into that, maximize that, start exporting those kinds of technologies and become a world leader going into the future, which also then means that we can attract climate finance from the rest of the world to, to do our just transition. Because the critical thing is we can't just abandon those who have been affected by if we're going to move from, from coal, for example. But similarly, I'm just like go rushing into gas and, for example, uh, um, the oil drilling and the gas drilling that's, that's, on, that's on the table for the, for the coast uh, and offshore. And then suddenly find in 10 years time, oh, yeah, that was a bad idea. And now a whole lot of livelihoods. Um, who people, thousands of people who depend on the coast for, for food are now all undermined and now we've got another crisis. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Right. So, yeah. We also know typically that NERSA does take a couple of days to explain the reasons like, you know, the reasons underpinning the decisions like the one is just taken around car power ships. Mm -hmm. You say whatever those reasons are, they're likely to be flawed. What makes you so sure? Well, <laughs> I would say because they made the decision to go ahead. Um, <laughs> but but <laughs> because we know that they didn't give us the information that we would have been, been able to assess how much is it going to cost, for example, the price of electricity going forward. And we know the price of electricity is, if it goes forward like um, is expensive, then it just goes back to us as electricity consumers through ESCOM's uh, mechanisms. And then the issue is that if for some reason now the price gets really high and we can't afford it, then the government bails Eskom out. Mm. So either way, we're going to pay. And therefore, we need to have seen all of that information that was hidden from us during the application phase. So that's one of our very strong reasons we feel it's flawed. The second reason, as I've said, is they, uh, until they give us reasons, we can't see how they address the environmental obligations that they have. But... Um, we, we really can't see how they're going to have come up with the right reasons that would explain that away. So in other words, you're saying you can't envision a situation where the production of a unit of electricity through car power ships could be economical, could be affordable, essentially? No, I don't think so. And one of the things that other experts have pointed out is that when they gave the their application into NERSA, which we didn't see in terms of the, we did see the application, but not the prices, the gas price was uh, at an all-time low. So whatever price that we saw in the papers that was uh, the DMRE released, um, the, that's likely to be the lowest price. But mm. we don't know where it's going to be next year. We don't know where it's going to be in five years' time. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, I don't often say this to my guests, but let's hope you're wrong. Um, even though I know that you, you don't think that's likely yourself. For now, thank you for your time. Liz McDade is the strategic lead for an NGO called Green Connection. Liz, once again, thanks very much indeed.